Yo, what it do? It's your boy, Jay Reed. And we got back in this motherfucker. So y'all boys, press that subscribe button, link in the bio. Let's get this shit popping. Yo, what it do? Hello. Yo, we got Southside Chicky in here. Now, that's a long ass name right there. And he's already producer named Southside a rapper. So, do we call not... you South? Do we call you Southside or Chicky? Chicky. Okay. Where the Southside came from? Because I'm from the Southside. Okay. What zone are you from? To be honest, I'm not even going to cap. I thought I was from Zone 3, but somebody told me I wasn't. Dang. I felt like Zone 3 was East Point, College Park area. Somebody told me that's incorrect. So until I find out exactly what it said, I guess I can't say I'm from Zone 3 because that's not Zone 3. <laughs> mm. So you don't know what zone you're from, basically? No, like, I always grew up thinking that, th that East Point, College Park was like Zone 3. But then like somebody was like, no, nah, that's not Zone 3. I'm like, so, I don't know what it is. So you grew up in College Park. Is, is that far from Martin Luther King, that street over there? Mm. Martin Luther King, Martin Luther King, like on the west side. Okay, okay, okay. I was about to say, anytime Martin Luther King on the street, that means there's violence on that street. He stood for non-violence. <laughs> like every street with Martin Luther King on got some damn violence on that motherfucker. But um, park that's close to like the College Park train station, like okay. Main Street, stuff like that. Now, you grew up in Black Hollywood your whole life, right? Hol I mean, Atlanta. Black Hollywood, yep. Okay. <laughs> So what's your thoughts on uh, the Atlanta rap scene? You know, a lot of people want to move there because they figure they can pop off real quick. They figure they can get hot doing nails, lashes, and et cetera. Like, what's your thoughts on that? I mean, they coming to the right – well, they they going to the right place because I'm in Cali right now. So they going to the right place. But I just feel like it's just so much of it. Like, we're like – we're like drowning in hairstylists and rappers and eyelash ticks and nail artists and stuff like that. So it just be like, I mean, Atlanta's small, but then it's like, I feel like it's good for Atlanta in a way because it, it give us more hype, give us more attraction to the city. But at the same time, it's packed up there. And everybody seems to be doing the same shit. I feel like everybody not meant to rap. I'm sorry. I feel like everybody... Not Finally, right. you took the words right out of my fucking like mouth. Everybody's not me. Everybody can't rap. I feel like everybody just see it as like, oh, like anybody can get a song and then that shit could just go viral and then they could just be big. But it's like you have to have it. You can't, you got to have that talent already in you. You can't just wake up one day like, oh, I'm going to make a song just so I can get rich. Nah, that shit got to be inside like, you. Oh, you got to, like, already have it. Like, it had to be somebody already tell you before that shit. Like, oh, you got it. You need to do this. You need to do that. And then you can do that. But folks just be trying to rap just to make money. And they don't know. Being an artist is, like, the brokest job <laughs> you can have until you, like, really make it big and start doing something for yourself and, like, investing your money the right way. But being an artist is, like, the brokest job ever. You damn near like a drug dealer. It's a hit and miss. <laughs> like, well, I feel like the drug dealers get more love than the rappers. Everybody want to kill a rapper nowadays. The drug dealers get more love than them. I mean, don't nobody want to kill me. Not that I know of. Well, I'm just not that you in general. I'm talking some about other rappers, the yeah. male rappers. Female rappers ain't dying. Only the male rappers dying. Yeah, female rapper getting beat up and shit. <laughs> and they just doing fake Instagram beats. 
But then you see a lot of people want to be strippers in Atlanta and get their ass done. What's your thoughts on that, like, the surgery part? I'm not going to cap. Like, I done, I done danced before at Magic City my senior year. You know, when oh, you got... Oh, oh, how old you was? I was, I was legal. You you got you to be 18 or older to work there, but you got to be... You got to be 21 to go in. That was the craziest part I've ever heard about it. Like, I could be 18. I could, I could work there. But if I wanted, like, on my, one of my off days just to come sit and chill in here, I can't chill in here because I'm not 21 or older. I was about to say, child labor laws are coming after them. If you were 16 or 17 days in strip club, they about to shut that motherfucker down. Nah, not magic. So what was it like dancing in front of those nasty, horny men, busting it <laughs> wide open? <laughs> um... I was young, so I Shaking didn't know, all your innocence. Sorry, I didn't know how to do like I didn't know how to do like pole tricks. I still don't know. How. I don't know how to do none of that. So I literally had to make my money like doing like table dances, just twerking and stuff like that. I'm not flexible, so I went, you know, doing all the extra stuff. I'm really just, you know, dancing and shit and like looking around the room and seeing what other folks are doing. Like, okay, I'm gonna do that. <laughs> and then like, okay, I'm gonna do this. Okay, I'm gonna, <laughs> okay, I'm gonna look back. I'm gonna do this and do that. But it was. I didn't really like it. It was too fast paced. Like that life, that's a different type of life. Like strippers and stuff like that. I get them that shit because it's so it, it's so such a fast moving life. So much shit be going on in there. Just, now you could have got pregnant by a rapper or some athletes down there. You could have been uh been a baby mama down there. So what what made you stop you from doing that right now? Because I'm pretty sure a lot of athletes were throwing it at you, giving it to you, trying to holler at you. Um, I was really only working for like a week because I needed to make my senior dues. Cause my mama had put me out, so I needed to make my senior dues. So I was only there for like a week. Then after that, it was just great music and shit like that. And I was just like, no, I'm not trying to strip no more because I I'm trying to take my music serious now that I'm out of high school. So my face card matter. I'm not trying to have nobody that. You know, be a nigga that be like, oh, let me get a feature. And I'm like, oh, it's this much. And then they come to the club and be like, now let me get a feature. Like, no, this is separate. Don't try to put them together. So, like, they're like, I don't got time for that. So, I, right, right. I never really, I never really liked it. It was just, Atlanta just, I feel like Atlanta just full of hustles. Like, if you're from Atlanta, you're going to have to get off your ass and make some type of money, or you just going to shrivel up and die because. Like, everybody is out trying to get some money, so I don't give a fuck what female it is. Any female, she broke, she doing some type of shit. She tricking off, she dancing, she selling something, she doing hair, makeup, nails, cookie dough, pretty cake. I don't give a fuck. She doing something. Like, she's not just, ain't nobody in the tunnel just sitting on their ass. Fact, she cooking unless dope. They got it made, unless they got somebody that's looking out for them. That's the only way. <laughs> Only in Atlanta, you got a female selling lashes, cooking dope, babysitting, got a daycare in the back, and trying to be a rapper at the same damn time. It's like, God dang, multifaceted down there. It's back, somebody, and that's me, because I know how to do everything you said except the cook dope part, because, you know, we don't lie. But, and what high school did you go to down there in Atlanta? I went to Tri-Cities. Now, that's a very dangerous high school down there. That says one of the most <laughs> goodest high schools. That they called it by cities, tri titties, all this shit. Cause it was, it's like three different school zones merged into one. It's a magnet school. So it has like the, the drama department and all this shit going on. So there, I feel like besides other high schools, like I feel like you go to other high school, like you know how you see shit where folks be like, oh, this high school expelled this girl, suspended this girl because of what she had on, or like they be real strict about like what you're doing. Like at my school, they didn't, they didn't, not like they didn't care. They just, so if you was like if you was a dude that if you was a if you was a gay man but you wanted to like get nails where where we you know wear like a girly top long as it's some dress code and shit like that like wear girl shit long as it's in dress code and shit like that they're not gonna send them to you they're not gonna say they're not gonna like i remember in middle school and shit like that you come if a little boy come just like a girl or doing some girl shit they're gonna come sit his ass down in the counseling suite call his mama like hey your son can't come to school like this he's confusing our children but in high school i feel like they just didn't give a fuck they just let you do anything got any fist fights down there in that wild city and in, in that high school a lot of fist fights. we had a lot of people that passed away uh my friend Raina, she uh um, died in a car accident when we, we were getting, like, when we had, like, just, I want to say, got out of, like, 10th grade. Was it 10th grade or 11th grade? I had a friend, Abdul. 
well, not a friend, but I just knew of him. He, like, skateboarded. He got, like, hit by a car, kind of by Tri-Cities and stuff like that. It was, like, a lot of stuff going on. People was fighting. It was, like, extra stuff. Like, it was just a lot. We had, like, little riots sometime. Like, I mean, we had a riot, and then, like, the police officers was, like, pouring so much mace everywhere with that baton. So awesome. explain that riot. I want you to explain that in detail. Like... It'll just start off as, like, one fight between two people. And then, like, this one person might have hella folks behind them, and this one person might have hella folks behind them. And then that fight start breaking out, and then all they folks just start fighting. And, now, and then it just, like, escalates and escalates, and innocent bystanders getting hit. Now they jumping in and fighting. It'd be, like, shit like that. And then here come Officer Moody. <laughs> her light skin ass shortcut with that fucking mace and that fucking baton swinging, knocking those down. She did not give a fuck. She didn't care if he was a girl, a little girl, a little boy. She's gonna swing that baton. You better get out of her way. Cause she gonna tell you to get out of her way. Or she gonna swing it. Cause she gonna feel like you're you're trying to keep keep fighting. <laughs> you're not trying to stop. But that's the only thing that pretty much happened. That was the yeah. riot that I seen. I just remember walking through the hallways and like tasting the pepper spray like damn and then I'll be trying to skip and shit like ah oh, she I got a little bit in my eyes I need to go to the nurse <laughs> and I yeah. wasn't nowhere near the nurse. Did, did a lot of people try you in high school? Um I was only in one situation and it was just when I was dating this football player <laughs> That was in the older grade, that was in the higher grade to me. So I was like a junior and he was a senior. And he just switched up on me and started fucking with this girl that was on the dance team. And I don't know. It will just be like, she would never try me, but I would just hear the shit she would talk about me to her friends from like my friends that's with her friends type shit. So it'll just be like, I don't know. It was like weird. Like, I think one day I went off on her on the, on the bus ramp. Cause like me and him had like just fucked, and then <laughs> I th I forgot what the fuck she was doing. We was like across the bus ramp, and then my friend she really popped it off. She was just like, "Why she keep staring at you?" I was like, "I don't know, go ask her." And this bitch literally walked over there and was like, "Why you keep staring at my friend?" And then all I seen was like her from across the street, like just like like doing all this. So I just I just got up and walked over there like, "No, say it to me, say it to me with all that energy." And then we was just arguing. And I like start and I just like spill the beans like bitch. Me and him just fuck like y'all don't got nothing special going on. And then like just so happened like right after that the nigga like walked on the bus ramp and I was just like like look at God like as soon as he walked on the bus ramp I'm just like mm. and then like she looked at him and she just started calling his name and then like he t he walked her down the bus ramp started talking to her and I was just like yelling and screaming like let him take you down there to water you let him take you down there to water you. <laughs> And what is a lot of you? Because I had told her that we fucked and shit like that. And it's just crazy that, like, we was, like, she had, like, confronted him, like, in front of me. And then he was, like, yeah. I was, like, looking at him, like, I wish he would say no. He was, like, yeah. And then after that, he, like, walked down the bus ramp with her and, like, kept talking. So I was, like, let him just keep lying to you. He's just going to keep trying to downplay the situation like it's not what it is. Because it's crazy how he's talking to you down there, but he can say none of that shit while he's, like, standing in front of my face. So, yeah, was you one of those kids that fucked in school? Um, that ain't on your business. I don't kiss and tell if I was. So you, so you was in those yeah. auditorium rooms and in, in those bathrooms, skipping class in between yeah, where everybody was in school? No auditoriums. I don't know about no bathrooms or no gym, but Tri Cities had its spots. It had, we had in those locker room. rooms. No, nah, not no locker room. I'm not doing no shit like that, like shit where folks can actually like walk in on you, like you can get called. I'm not doing no dummy missions, like no. Closets. So we in the closets. had shit like we had like theaters and like catwalks and like concession stands. Like we had like a we had a school and then we had a magnet building and then like they have like the theater connected to the school, but then it's like separate. It's like like on the bus ramp, far away from the rest of the school, like the classes and shit. So it's like the theater and then you have like this big ass open area. Where the concession stand is at, that shit always open. We used to be up there climbing on the roof and shit. <laughs> oh, I know what you're talking about, like being them, them little buildings over there where people be talking about football and shit. 
like doing the football games. Y'all be climbing the mill. Yeah, I'm on to that right there. I ain't never been up in that. You talking about the skybox? I never been. Little the skybox, let me call it. But when we used to smoke and shit, we used to go on the roof and shit like that. But I'm not giving up my my um my spots. You know what I'm saying? I already know the spots, though. I already know the. I already know the. So when you start making music, and start taking it serious. Really, when I graduated, because I was just like. My mom, she was just on my ass about getting a diploma because I was the first out of my, out of all her kids to like get their diploma on time, like when they were supposed to get it. So she was just like on my ass. Like, I'm talking about like not from ninth to 11. She wasn't studying shit I was doing. But then as soon as he got to 12th grade, she was just like on my ass hard as fuck. Like, you need to graduate. But then I'm just like, where was all this energy the other three years? <laughs> like, but. I was just like, after I got my diploma, I was just like, here, like, I gave you what you wanted, so now it's my time to do what the fuck I want to do, and I want to do music, so I was just like, I ended up not, I ended up, um, we ended up getting into it, and I wasn't staying with her, like, the first couple of years I was doing music and dropped my EP, because we wasn't seeing eye to eye, like, I'd be leaving the house at night, go to the studio and shit, she just like, she wanted to go to college, be a career, but I didn't really see myself, I could see myself going to college. Probably like when I'm a little older. I'm 23, so probably like my late 20s. I, if I have like a kid or something like that, I'm probably gonna go to college or something, do something, get a degree in something. But as far as right now, I don't know what I want to put myself in debt for. Because I'm just gonna be putting myself in debt. So I don't wanna put myself in debt for something that I don't even, I don't even know if I really wanna do for the rest of my life. That's something I will just fall back on and just sit down and just do. Right, right. You can't always do what your parents want you to do. You got to do what's best for you at a certain age, I feel like. A lot of people chase their parents' dreams or their parents try to live their dreams through their kids. You got to do what's best for you as an individual, I feel like. Yeah. So I really started, like, after high school. I started um, with my friend, K-Way. He was just in the live, but he was in this group called Dab Set, and they all used to go with my friend, Eli House. Had a studio and record and shit like that. So my first time like really recording was like on K Way songs and shit like that. And it was just like little love songs, little, you know, indie feelings, South type stuff. But then like, I don't know. I just wanted to I'm not gonna cap. I feel like the other members of his group, when I wanted to I wanted to start doing like I feel like I was very versatile, so I could do like all type of music. But I feel like because I'm a female the rest of his group didn't see me as that. Like they didn't see me being as versatile. Like they just see they just wanted me to be on their like lovey dovey songs, like fucking songs, like any feelings, talking shit, you know, breakup songs, shit like that. So it just be like, look, <laughs> I wanna be on the songs talking about like robbing and killing niggas. I wanna do that too. So that, I think that's what like really pushed me to like make my own EP. Cause I was just like, I want folks to like see what I can do, like so then, like, after that, that's when everybody just wanted to start doing music with me. Like, all type of different songs. It didn't matter what type of songs it was. It stopped being a little lovey-dovey, Bryson Tiller girly songs and shit like that. It started being, like, all type of songs started being trapped. All type of shit. So I was just, like, I felt like I accomplished something with that. But now I'm just working on the second one. Because it's been yeah, like two years. <laughs> I mean, you didn't put out music, what, two years? So, like, three. That long. Three years. Three years. Excuse me. Three years. So, like... You know, why why that long delay though? Was it because of like personal reasons or it's personal? Because of personal and stuff like I'm not one of those folks that can't make it like I just got everything all figured out. I just got this, I got that. Like sometimes the music could just be going, everything will be going good, everything will be on a steady pace, but then like one thing in my life will just like fuck it up like my ride might fuck up. I might not have a stable studio situation. So then it would be a lot of shit that would just like hold me back from that. And then it's just like the the COVID shit hit. Like I wanted to drop something last year, but then the COVID shit hit and it was just like, I wasn't going anywhere. I wasn't doing anything. I wasn't like experiencing anything. So it's like, what the fuck am I going to write about if I'm not going through shit? Like, so I feel like the three years really made it. I feel like folks look at it like, damn, like, what's taking you so long, but in a sense, I feel like it's kind of good because you know I'm going to be talking about shit that I was going through. You know that, like, it's going to be shit that was happening within those three years. I'm going to be talking about all the shit that 
has been going on, like why I've been missing for the three years and shit like that. It's not gonna be like everybody else albums and EPs where they just talk about the shit they got and the shit they doing now. So you feel like the COVID kind of stunt your growth as an artist? Couldn't find like no material? I feel like for up certain upcoming artists, it kind of stopped it at first. But then I feel like everybody had to like shake back for real, for real. And like try to find different avenues to get it like TikTok and Triller and shit like that. Like everybody had to find a different shit. Like both start doing Forex and OnlyFans and shit like that. Like everybody started trying to do their little shit to try to help it. But I feel like at first it did fuck up a lot of shit. Like, cause everybody was just like, what the fuck are we going to do? Like everything was locked down. Everything was so strict. I felt like the world was going to end. Like we was going to die. I feel like the purge was going to happen. I'm not going to cap. <laughs> I feel like all that shit was going to happen when it first happened and it was locking shit down. Like, Putting to lock you up if they catch you out type shit. I was like, oh, it's Man, they were just saying that shit to scare motherfuckers. No, but they was, like, literally doing it. Like, Atlanta, we You had know people who got locked up? I don't know nobody got locked up. But Atlanta, we had a curfew. You seen the riot and shit like that with when the folks, when the, when the when the girl and her boyfriend got dragged out the car and shit like that had started happening. So I was like, it's getting real. Like. In the you know, Aubrey situation, he got shot in windows. Man. Yeah, like, shit, like, like all that shit started happening. I just felt like the world was just gonna, like the whole world was just gonna riot, and it was just gonna be over. Like I just felt like we was in in the end of our days. Like this was it. Folks start, goddamn, all them superstitious people start doing all that shit. Like the world was finna end. This is the rapture and all this shit. Oh, that's when I really start getting scared. Like mm -mm, I don't fuck with that. <laughs> Did you ever like sneaky lunch during the um, quarantine to shut down? No, I was in a relationship. <laughs> okay. You smoking a lot of weed? Was I smoking a lot of weed? Yeah. Oh, trying to think. During quarantine, was I? Yeah. I mean, I was smoking the average amount of weed that I always smoke. I feel like I smoke a lot every day. We're going to get to that, too, though. Then you got numb on your face. You got a face tattoo. You got numb on your face. Now, what made you get that? Um, you can't see because I got makeup on, but it's ain't no. I know you got it though. And a, a broken heart. Um, I was just going through a lot, and I just felt numb in the situation to like pain, as far as like. So I got it just so it can be like a daily reminder to just be numb to like emotions and shit like that. As far as like, because when I get in my feelings, I do the most. Not the most like crazy shit, but I just. Communication wise, I I'm gonna do the most. Like we gonna talk, so it's just like I just wanted to be numb to that shit because it's just like I'm always in my feelings. I'm always chasing some boy or some shit like that. I'm never just focused on me, so I just want to be numb to all the extra shit and just focus on the main shit that I'm supposed to be focused on. No, nah, you say you chasing the boy, or the boy's chasing you to get you off focus off music. No, nah, it's just like, it'll start off as a boy takes to be, like, of course. And then we'll date and stuff like that. But, like, you know, relationship shit happen and shit like that. So then I'll start feeling like I'm giving more or I'm putting in more effort or chasing the person. So then that's why I said chasing. Because that's where it started feeling like. It started feeling like I want them more than they want me. And I don't like that feeling. So then it just went around. Them. So you like your guys to be thirsty after you? Uh-uh. It just got to be equal. Like, I don't want to feel like I'm doing too much. Like, if we arguing or something, if we having confrontation, I want us both to come together and communicate and, you know, talk about it and move past it. I don't want to be, me to be trying to communicate and move past it. You get attitude and shut down, don't want to talk to me and shit, and want to just drag the argument out for, like, hours and hours or days and days. Like, no, I'm not trying to do that. That shit is, like, unhealthy, stresses you out. How you in your feelings, depressed? No, I don't want to do that. So, what kind of guys are you interested in? Um, I don't really. Drug dealers and scammers? No. I just feel like you got to have some type of ambition, some type of, as long as you got some type of ambition, you have goals that you want to reach. You got shit you want to do. You're not just living, just to live. <laughs> If that makes sense. Like, you got shit you want to do in your life. You can be broke. You can be rich. I don't give a fuck. I treat everybody the same. You really, it all depends on your vibe, your energy. 
every person that I've ever dated my entire life looks nothing the same. You know how like certain people have like, I feel like men have a type. Females. That's a lie. That's a lie. I feel, I, feel like certain, I feel like, okay, I feel like certain females have a type, but I feel like most down to earth females don't really have a type. It all depends on like the vibe or the energy that person gives or like how they make them feel. Like, but I feel like mostly guys have a type. Like, you could see, like, most guys, you you could look down their timeline, all their exes, they'd they like, all be light skinned, all be thick, all be skinny I all have like one certain quality of the same but like you go down my whole line of like my lineup of all the people I've ever been with they all look different none of them look the same none of them at all everybody do something different every person I do is always art every person I date is always artistic though and so they've been rappers they've been rappers as well like they might do music or might they might be a upcoming artists like me doing music they might dance they might draw paint they might trap they might do all type of shit so it just be it's a variety you feel like you got unreasonable expectations when you go in these relationships do i have unreasonable expectations unrealistic expectations that's what i meant to say unrealistic expectations they too high they just way too high uh, going into it, I feel like when you first go into relationships, people tell you the people that the things they want to do, like the goals they want to accomplish. So if you tell me that, I'm going to try to, if we together, I'm going to try to push you to do that and be that person that you told me that you wanted to be. So like, if we start clashing on that, I'm going to just take it as like, that's not what you want to do. Like, that's not, I don't be looking at it unrealistic if you tell me like this is what you're trying to do so if i'm trying to help you do that and then we clash in the middle of me trying to help you do that i'm gonna just look at it like you just don't want to do it like you just don't want to be that person you said you want to be you just want to do this shit you want to do so no i mean I don't, people don't, are I don't talk realistic anything in relationships but people lie in the beginning anyway because they they put on the front of them they ain't the real person Y'all, we first date somebody anyway. They putting up the front anyway. So, I mean, so do do you end the relationship or the other person end it? I usually end it because why? I end it when I start feeling lame. Like if, like I said, like if I'm trying to communicate with you and try to get to the bottom of shit, and you just like being an asshole, brushing me off, not trying to talk. Be a short, be a job, be. I'm gonna start feeling lame. I'm gonna start feeling like I'm doing too much. Like I'm, like I'm gonna start feeling like I'm like coming. I'm like doing. I'm just start feeling like I'm doing too much. Like I can't explain. That. I'm just start feeling like I'm like crazy. Like I'm going crazy on you or something. Like I'm just like once my met once I don't sent like three messages and you ain't even sent one back. She's gonna be like, okay. Now I'm like, I feel like I'm. It's so petty, crazy. bro. <laughs> No, like, it's like, because I be sending, like, paragraphs. So if I send, like, three long-ass paragraphs, and then after that, some, like, five minutes go by, and I text you and be like, hello, question mark, question mark. We were just texting back fast as fuck, and I'm texting you like, hello, can't respond. I'm going to start feeling lame, like I'm doing too much, like I'm, like I'm one of them. So then I just be like, okay, you know what? Then I text you like, you know what? You got it, bro. Go ahead, do what you want to do. I ain't gonna say nothing else to you and just leave it like that. Hey, you have a double back? Yeah. If I love a person, yeah. If I love a person, yeah. If I love a person. Okay, okay. But if it's just like, because I I remember, (laughs) it all depends on when somebody catch me. Like, if I'm fresh out of a relationship, like, the whoever I'm talking to at that time, you you gonna get cut off quick, like, cause I'm fresh out of relationship, so I don't know already. Then just jump that some bullshit and just the entire. You, you want to rebound? So I'm, so I'm no, I'm not. So it's just no, it's not like that. So it's just like I'm not gonna step into this situation and just deal with your bullshit after I just stepped out of that. So you know, like when you first start talking to somebody, you know, you might ignore the red flags because you might start liking them a lot, start loving them and shit like that, and then y'all start dating for like for like years and shit. 
So if I'm fresh out of like a year or like some months relationship and then I talk to somebody new, if I start seeing a red flag, I'm just be like, no, like I'm not finna do that. I just went through that with him and I just got out of that with him. I'm not finna go that go through that with you and you just you just begging me to talk to me like no. It's not finna happen. Wait, wait a minute, you got guys begging to talk to you. Wait a minute now. Wait a minute. Okay, look. That's just my lingo. That's just how I talk. So do not sit here and pick and choose the words that I'm saying and want to talk about the words. I'm not saying that niggas just be, you know, in my DM, like, please just talk to me. I mean, it's a few, but not all of them do, but I mean, I mean, folks be trying to talk to me, and I don't be trying to talk to, talk to them. They're going to keep trying to talk to me. I don't really. And you just give them a chance? I just chose the, I just chose the word, beg you. <laughs> nah, nah, you know what you were saying. You know what you were saying. You know what you meant. I just chose the word, beg you. So what's your most toxic trait, though? Do you consider yourself a toxic person or a venomous person? I'm an overthinker. What do that mean? Well, I'm a Libra, so we overthink <laughs> a lot. So, like, when I tell anybody that dates me or talks to me, when you're dealing with somebody that's an overthinker, you have to be very good at communicating. So, like... You can't just, I can't explain it. You can't, you can't just leave room for my mind to wonder because I'm an overthinker. So it's just like, you leave room for my mind to wonder. You start posting all the little crazy shit on Instagram, making it seem like you fucking with this, this bitch, that bitch, that bitch, but you ain't really talking to me and really communicating with me and shit like that. In my mind, I'm just going to be like, okay, that's what you got going on. Like, because you're leaving that room for opportunity. Like, I can't explain it. I just overthink a lot. Like if you, you wake up and do something different, like if I'm the type of girl, like if, if we always wake up on a certain routine, like you wake up, tell me good morning, then da, 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 we might have sex, then, then you might do this, do that, and all some shit. And that's how we normally wake up. And then one morning you wake up and you don't say good morning to me. We don't fuck, we don't, you just feel distant, shit like that. I'm going to start overthinking, like, right then, like, what the fuck? <laughs> what the fuck happened between last night and this morning? Like, what the fuck going on? You know, overthinking kills, right? Yeah. <laughs> so you go through your man phone? No. Because I don't know his password. So, so so, how you know you somebody cheating on you, then? How you just with somebody cheating on you? I'm good, I because my aura and my vibe and my energy is so in one, I feel like I'm good at sensing other people's energies. So, like, I feel like once you dated somebody for a minute and you know and you know their patterns and stuff like that, then, like, when they start switching up or acting different, you kind of feel the vibe, you kind of feel the energy. Shit just change, if that makes sense. Has a guy ever left you before? Has a guy ever dumped you before? Yes, I got. Broken. When does when does happen? When does happen? When does happen? I was in high school. I was like in the eleventh grade. I was dating this ninth grader. He was like the total opposite of what I ever dated. He was like light skinned, had curly hair. He was real handsome, real cute. And I, we dated for like two days, and he broke up with me <laughs> because people in the school was telling him that I was going to get back with my ex. So he was just like, he didn't want to risk me getting back with my ex, like getting his heart broken. So he was just like, no, I'm good. I'm so sad. That's my first It feels funny you remember your high school relationships. You count those? You count those to this day? Your high school relationship as an adult? I mean, relationships are bonds that you have with people. So, I mean, if we dated, we dated. Like, I'm just going to tell you how long we dated and how serious it was and stuff like that. I'm not going to, I don't know. I'm not going to, like, how I used to classify shit, like, the the person that I dated in high school for, like, majority of high school. When I was in high school, I was like, oh, this is my first love. And then, and I'm like, I still wouldn't to this day be like, oh, yeah, that was my first love. Like, hell no. <laughs> like, no. <laughs> that was not love. Have you, have you ever cheated on the guy before? 
Yeah. And why? I thought they were cheating on me. And they probably was. When you say you cheated, you say you fucked up. Doing something that I needed them, or they wasn't doing something. They wasn't like shit. It be stuff like I don't. Now when I get into relationships, I do everything faithful. Yeah, I'm faithful from the beginning. Like, well, how you like say you do everything faithful, but you cheated? Like my, I'm saying in the beginning, but unless you like do something to me, then I'm like, I'm not finna JB looking stupid. Like you're not finna just, I'm not you're not finna try me. Like I'm just lame. So it's just like if you gonna be out there doing you, or you think I'm not finna do me too? Okay, I'm finna show you. So. It be shit like that. And I also get that type shit, but it just be like, it be a long time, like, if we broken up. Like, if you out doing you and shit like that, I'm going to be doing me. The only last shit that I was, like, really faithful in, and, like, I told them, like, everything about, like, all my past shit like that was my last one. Because they had been, I feel like they had just went through a lot in their life, so I just didn't want to, like, be a burden or, like, put extra shit on them. So I was just like, I'm just going to do right by this one. <laughs> And I don't know. The only thing that I did was just like when we had broke up one time, I had went back with my ex because they had went back with their ex. That was the only thing. But we was broken up, so technically that wasn't cheating. But and all the other ones, yeah, I cheated because it was just like shit. They cheated me. Wait a minute, wait a minute. When you say you cheated, you was talking. You was just texting the other person, or you was having sex with the other person you cheated with. I probably was giving other folks conversation, or probably linking up folks, smoking, and shit like that. So you fucking them, basically. Dude, I, that probably what that did, I probably did. Fuck, I'm not saying other niggas, because I probably, I just gonna be happy. Don't let the followers and the and the light skin tattoo shit fool you. I do not be having. I be having people on my dick, but it's just like I know based off how they come at me, I know what they want from me. So they might not get the attention that they want from me. I might say, "Hey, what's up?" From nine, every now and then, might have a little conversation with them. But other than that, I'm not really going to get too deep in it or, like, be serious with them because I know, based on how they coming at me, what they want from me. So I didn't just – if I cheat – when I was cheating on exes and shit like that, nine times ten, I, I cheated on them with somebody I had already done with. It'll never be no new people, no new hoes, no new lineup. It'll be somebody that I'm already comfortable with, already cool with, already done fucked on probably back in the day or Wait a minute. So you saying after you go smoke and fuck them, then you go back to your the man you pre that you're currently with. So wait a minute, what is that conversation like? What is that mindset like for you to do something like this? I ain't judge you. But what is that mindset like? I feel like most people, folks will take offense to this question. But I'm really not because niggas cheat too. So like at the time they was cheating. As long as, as long as you wrap that shit up when you dealing with other folks. That's all I be worried about. So I know that if I'm dealing with somebody else and I'm and I'm cheating on somebody I'm with, I'm, of course I'm gonna wrap it up. I don't want to take nothing back to you, like the fuck and fuck up with me. You got going on, get caught the fuck up. But yeah, eventually, like later on down the line, when the person find out you cheated and they start asking you all them questions and shit, like so, when was it? When did you go over there? What did y'all do? <laughs> I just be like, then that's when you start telling them, like, yeah. Do you ever be Thanks honest and tell them right up? No, what the fuck? No, because <laughs> so, so in other that, words, you lying to him. You lying. Do y'all do it? Do y'all do it? Do y'all do, do. do y'all when you do it? Do you go right back home and be like, okay, baby, I cheated. I just, I just went and got the dick sucked. Fuck this bitch. Like, no, you don't just go in the house and say that shit. She either gotta find out. Y'all probably go out. The bitch might see you. Give her some bad looks. Some Instagram shit might happen or something like that. That's how shit happened now. So, yeah. Once we get in that part of the relationship, once I feel like we in that part of the relationship where you don't start cheating on me and you don't start doing shit like that, if I decide, if we, if I take you back and you still show them patterns like you cheating and you doing this and that, okay, I'm going to go have my fun too. If you find out, you find out. You can't say that because you was doing you. We could just choose to break up or we could just both stop all together. But it's either, either or because ain't no in between. This is another thing I hate when females keep saying this shit right here. Guys do it. Just because a man do it don't mean it's okay. And I don't agree guys should do it either. But just because a guy do it doesn't make it okay, though. I hate that equal rights shit. Well, y'all do it. That don't make it right, though. You see what I'm saying? Just, that don't make it right. I just feel like if you decided to get in a relationship with somebody or, or build a bond with somebody or have something with somebody and 
you want to step out, see other people, let that person know so they can decide if they want to fuck with you or not. Well, why you ain't do that, dude? And go behind their back and start fucking with somebody because you want to keep exploring your options because y'all got mad because they get on your nerves or some shit like that and go start exploring your options. But then kicking it to that person like, you not doing nothing, you just all for them, you ain't did nothing with them. Don't do that because that's cheating, you lying. So why you that, do that? So why you, that what? person, that other person, still young? They still want. How you know that they're not tired of your shit? How you know sometimes they don't want to go fuck with somebody else, but they choose to stick out and be with you? So why the fuck would you do that to them? So yeah. So why you What's doing that? This? It's not like, huh? So why you was doing that? This? Huh? I said why you was doing it? So you was fucking around and he was fucking around. Why you just was like, you know what? I don't want to be with you. And I'm just be with the other person. Why? Why you wouldn't do that, dude? What you was just saying? Because I might have a certain bond with that person. Like we might be, the, we might be together for a long time. I, like, I might really love this person, but it just be like shit. Like if they make me mad on time, we might not see each other. Might be like, okay, if you move, if if you making it seem like you moving on and shit like that, okay, I'm gonna try to move on. I might end up fucking with somebody else. Then in the midst of me fucking with this other person, they might try to double back like, oh, no, nah, let's get back together. Let's fix this, da 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 And then when we had that conversation, that's when we that's when we draw the line like, okay, are we going to be all for each other or are you still trying to fuck off on different people because I'm not trying to do that? Then that's when we go have that conversation. Bro, you good, bro. You, you, you a good cheater must be, bro. God damn, bro. You said what? I'm not a good cheater. Okay. So let me get this right. I just got to wrap my mind around it. So while you was with that dude, so you was sucking that man, but you went home to kiss it. Huh? I said, while you was with that man, you was doing whatever you were doing. Then you went back and kissed that man that night? It's just heartless. No, right it's there, just that life. Okay, if I feel like you cheated on me and you start focusing on somebody else, nine times out of ten, I'm not just going to be right back with you. Like, I'm not just going to be right under you. Like, I'm going to break up with you. We're not going to be together for probably like a week or two. Nine times ten, the nigga's going to be an asshole and try to play victim, act like he had his reasons and da 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 This and the third, like, it ain't really bothering him. or act like he fucking with other females and having the best time in his life or we broken up and shit like that. So throughout that time, I might meet somebody new and start talking to somebody old that I used to mess with and just start kicking to somebody old, and I might fuck on that person. And then that's when... I guess I stopped giving attention to the person, and then they started being like, oh, where the fuck, what the fuck you doing? Like, who the fuck you hang around? So then they want to double back and want to try to fix it. So then that's when we had that conversation, like, mm -hmm. we all each other, or you finna just do you. But that was just all of my past relationships. Oh, in my relationship, boy. In my current, well, not in my current relationship, because I'm not in a relationship right now. It's kind of complicated, but... In the my most recent one, that's probably that's probably the most I've been faithful. No, the most you've been faithful. You see it going places, or is it just like you just taking it steady right now? Like this? I really don't know, cause it's really like pins and needles. Because I really be feeling like <laughs> it be trying me, so I really really make me feel lame, like to the point where folks be like damning me, folks that know us, DM me and be. Like, like, you too pretty to be going through that. Why you got him putting you through that? Da, da, da. So that's what we make me feel like. That? That's what we make me feel like. No, it be like female shit like that. Like they be like, girl, why you just keep going back to that? Like, he just wanna do this, he's gonna do this. So I just be like, bro. It just be making me feel so lame. I just be like, ah, why do I gotta keep going through this? <laughs> it's hard to find love out there, you feel like? In Atlanta, yeah. I'm just saying in general. We talking about it. Like, I'm saying in general. Um, I don't feel like it's hard to find love. It's just both people have to equally want it and put in the effort. Cause love is not easy, so you have to like work for it in a sense. I feel like in Atlanta, it's just too much going on. Too much to see, too much to do. Everybody know every, everybody is just so much shit to get into. Mm. It's just too much, so many distractions. So it's just like. Mm -mm. Do you shoot your shot at guys? 
Do I shoot my shot at guys? Yeah, do you shoot your shot at guys? Yeah. If I like How you shoot your shot? <laughs> I don't know. I probably like their pictures or like I like their pictures. And then like I probably just then I just go straight out the bat, just DM them like, do you got a girlfriend? <laughs> <laughs> Has any rappers funny. anybody hitting your DMs? Yeah. With rappers. Oh, that's fine. You ain't tell them? That's fine. Hey, you been flown out before? I've been flown out before. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> By rappers? Or athletes? No. no. Oh yeah. Is any athletes in your DMs too? They always look for somebody. They don't be like Okay, well, the athlete is an athlete, so I can't just say, let me not downplay them. But they'd be like, bitch, fuck you. <laughs> but it don't be like pro athletes, like folks that play for like major teams, but they'd be like college athletes and stuff. Maybe have a little blue check. looking for them? No. Nah. Oh, okay, okay. You don't want a name? You don't want to name no names? You want us to give them I don't names? Think, I don't really know their names. The only people I know is like, the little local celebrities or like the little rappers or folks that might deal me. I might know, I know they names, but like the little athletes and shit, I'm not really paying attention to them. Cause they used to be like football. They like football. It'll never be like basketball or nothing like that. It'd be like college football players. Mm. And you say rappers, are they, what, what kind of rappers? Are they top tier rappers? Are they bottom tier rappers? Like what kind of rappers? Is I, feel like local, I feel like in local Atlanta artists, rappers. Local Atlanta rappers. They've been on my page before? They've been on my platform? I don't think I talk to anybody on your platform. Okay, okay. Do you respond back or you kind of like, you don't want to date? Do you want to date somebody in the industry or outside? I respond of? back to some of them. Me and some of, me and, um, I want to say two of them have had um, an exchange. What was that like, dating another artist? I don't really be at the time. I was at the time I was single, so it just be like I really wasn't looking for nothing. And then because it's a, because they like because of like who they are, I really don't be thinking they looking for that with me. I just be like living life at the time, so it just be like shit. I'm not looking for it to be nothing serious hell because I know they not <laughs> unless they was somebody that's like constantly always trying to like get at me and talk to me and like telling me that like they want that with me. Then I'm not really gonna look at it like that. It's interesting. So that brings me to this question, though. You did the crybaby challenge. Thought you did a wonderful <laughs> job of it. It was very impressive. Um, got over a thousand views for it. So well, how many guys was in your DMs after that, that when you dropped that video? It was over. <laughs> it was. It wasn't as much as you think. Like, what is what is as much as I think, dude? Like, give me a number. Do you think? How many do you think? Give me the number that you think. I mean, I believe females probably get at least 10, 10 DMs on the daily. But since you're a rapper and uh, the lifestyle you live, I'm going to say you probably got like 100 DMs. Because you got over 1,000 views. So you probably got 100 DMs, 150. I'm going to go with 150. My magic number. All right. And wrong. I probably got like... I probably got like twenty DMs from dudes and probably like ten DMs from females. Mm. So you got thirty all together? Probably. Are you in the females too? Probably. You yeah. said probably. So you so you been with a female? I said before? yeah. You been with a female before? Mm -hmm. Yeah. What was that like? What was that experience like for everybody who watching? <laughs> what was that experience like? What was that experience like for everybody who watching? It was sensational. <laughs> was it like a threesome? Like with a guy? <laughs> or it was just all the girls. I've been in. I've been. I've never been in a poly. I've never been in a polygamous relationship. But I've just been with a female before. Just one time or like how many times? Twice. Twice? Mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> <Ooh. Sure got. laughs> now, now what about a female that pleases you different than how a guy pleases you? I just want to know that. I just want to get in the mind of a woman right now. I 
I feel like females were more passionate, we're more caring, we're more I can't explain it, we're more sensitive, we're more like understanding. Men, y'all meant to be like more aggressive, more dominant, so it's just like I don't know, I feel like sometimes females, we might meet a certain female that might give us that vibe and that energy or just make us feel like the fuck. <laughs> because <laughs> they might please us in a way that like the man can't. Like it's more than just the physical. I feel like we I feel like in like lesbian relationships is more like a it'd be more like a mental and emotional type of bond first. It like that's it that'd be like the main point of it at first. And then it and then like 'cause I feel like the physical don't always come. Like but then it's just like in the beginning with male relationships it's always kinda like more physical first. And then mm. you gotta kinda like go through shit or like kind of like get to know the person to kind of get that emotional and that mental bond and shit like that. Most females, we usually tend, when we meet other females, we usually get an emotional or mental bond with them like right off the bat, off their vibe, their energy, like off the first couple conversations, you kind of like know if you can fuck with that person or not. So I feel like that's the difference. Like that's what it, that's the difference between the two. Well, how can a female please you sexually, though? Because females, I mean, they ain't, they ain't got no dick in them. So how can they please you sexually than a man can? Um, we, we all have mouths. There's toys. You know? Well, a toy can't do you how a man do you. Grab your head, smack your head. Do all that other stuff right there, and so on and so forth. So A girl can, do, a girl can grab your ass, smack your head, do it. Do, I mean, grab your ass, smack your head, all this stuff. Okay. Do you be using the toys, or do you use a toy on you? Um, there's no toys usually performed. It might be like a little, a little, a little bullet, like a little viper or something like that. But it ain't gonna be like no strap-ons and no shit like that. I don't date like dykes because <laughs> I don't really see the point because they dress like boys, so I might as well just date a boy. So you I get date, the real thing. Yeah, I date. Feminine women, I date girls that's girly and look like me. Cause I'm tomboyish, even though like sometimes I dress girly, I'm really tomboyish. So it's just like, I don't know. I don't want nobody a tomboy with me. Let's face, let's face, let's face, let's face. So how it felt getting turned out that first time though? Like, did you know it? It was it happened like surprisingly or like? You got a lot of personal questions. <laughs> You said what? These are a lot of, these are a lot of personal questions. <laughs> I'm not telling you that. <laughs> that's fair. That's fair. You ain't got to an answer. That's for everybody watching. Y'all ain't got to an answer questions because Jay Reed I'm just going to ask the obvious question. But uh, is it hard for guys to take your craft seriously because of your appeal, your sex appeal? I feel like they take me serious. Like they know I can rap. You know I'm talented. They know I can do something. I just feel like, as far as the people that can do their part and help me advance and stuff like that, my sex appeal or like the way they like me might get in the way of that. So they might not help or might not do as much as they could because I'm not fucking with them a certain way they want me to. So I go through that a lot. <laughs> it's kind of hard to separate. So it's really kind of hard to like, you know, find those real genuine people that's really trying to like fuck with you off the stream and not trying to just get in your pants. No, nah, it's not hard to find them because the ones that's trying to get in your pants and usually show. So it's just like, it's easy to tell people that just want to help and stuff like that. And then the people that's, the people that just come around and just want you to fuck with them a certain way. But then as soon as you might fall back and start fun with them, they don't want to help you, they don't want to do this. It's very it's very easy to pick those type of people up. And you good at uh, you know, reading those people, weeding them out? To a certain extent, yeah. 
It depends on what goes through. It depends on what we go through. What they show me. That's interesting. Then you did a song called Song Cry. You see, your daddy was a fiend that had your mind going. Can you talk about that? I said, mm, mm, his mind gone because he a fiend. My dad was like uh, addicted to drugs when I was growing up and stuff like that. So it wasn't how we have a relationship. Like we have a really good relationship. Like we laugh, we joke. And he was always around and stuff like that. But he was like, he was around, but he wasn't like around. Like he was there, but he wasn't like there. So like how I needed him to be, I feel like. So it was kind of like hard to talk to him. Hard to like, really like, I don't know. It was just, mm, I can't explain it. I feel like his addiction really got in the way of the father that he could have been to me. So what what drugs? Mm. You started at Waffle House too, though. Yeah, I used to work for a Waffle House. Mm, interesting. What kind of drugs was your father on? Um, my dad did cocaine. Did he live in the house with you? Or? Mm-hmm. So you had two parents in the household? Mm-hmm. Is he getting help with it? Is he uh, seeking his, you know, rehab? Nah, he did it in his own way. It's dope, man. I root for y'all to repair your relationship. Um, so, how you was growing up as a kid really with both parents? Am I bad really with you, saying? We don't really have a bad relationship. We just... I don't know. He just got to do a little better. Did you say your family switch up on you? They was acting funny. You had mentioned that in the song. Can you explain that? I felt like when I got a little older and I started being able to like speak my mind and say how I feel about things, that's when my family kind of like started acting funny towards me. Like, not... All of them, some of them would just be like distance, but then like some of them, like the ones that I was like the closest to, it would just be like, I don't know. It was just when I got old enough to like really speak my mind and like talk my shit or say exactly how I feel and didn't give a fuck, it would just be like, I just felt like I stopped getting invited to stuff and they just started acting real funny towards me. Like, it was easier when I was young and I couldn't say anything because I had to respect them and I had to get sent to therapy. Then when I started getting older and it was like, no, you're not going to say this or you're not going to say that. I think I'm not going to say nothing back and respectful, but I'm still going to say something. But it would just be like, they just started acting funny all together. And I feel like because I wasn't... What does that make you... I feel like it was because I wasn't really like doing what they wanted me to do, so it was just like they they really want me to be like in college and stuff like that. So it's just like because I'm just tattoos, taste of music, smoke weed, all this shit like that. It's just like they just don't know what I'm trying to do with my life. So they, I feel like that's what makes them just be like made them not fuck with me. It was all good when I was in high school and shit like that because I guess. They felt like I was gonna go to college and stuff like that. Do something, make some, make a whole bunch of money, and come back and take care of them. Yeah, I feel like going to college is probably was the biggest scam. People sold us in school. Like if you go to college, your life, everything gonna turn out how you want it to be, and, and all that shit. Really, I feel like college is a scam. It put you more in debt. Put you more behind. That's why I used to tell my mom. Do uh do they still follow you as an adult? Uh, 
like, yep. My cousin follows me. My cousins follow me. I'm actually just cool with like one of my cousins. My auntie. Um, daughter. Yeah, man. Um, it'd be like that sometimes growing up. You know, family don't see the vision. Not really. Yeah, man. And uh, you said on your Instagram post, stop believing what you see on the ground because those people don't be having it in real life. Can you explain that post? I think you posted that yesterday. Oh, my God. I posted that because they don't. All these Instagram celebrities, stuff like that. Like, folks just, uh, some folks don't understand that Instagram is just Instagram. Like, Instagram is Instagram to a certain extent. Like, when you're in a relationship or something like that, and, and a nigga or a female post some shit, some subliminal shit throwing shots, no, then it's not Instagram, it's just Instagram. No, you trying to be funny, you trying to be petty. No, it's not Instagram, it's just Instagram. Instagram is just Instagram. When, when I say that, I'm saying it like, Folk, the shit that folks post on here, the shit that they say on here, that shit, the life they try to portray that they live, that's not the life that they, nine times ten is like fully living. Like, it's Instagram celebrities getting put out of condo, out of their condo, getting evicted out of their condos, having all their shit outside their house and shit. So that's what I meant by that. Because. I had just seen it, so I was just like, hmm, that's just amazing how these celebrities just be on Instagram. Like, yeah, I just bought me a house. I moved out of my last place. And then it's like, you didn't move out. You got evicted. <laughs> Do you know people personally? Are you talking about people personally that you know? Yeah. Who are those people? I'm not telling you. <laughs> I'm like, damn, you just want to, you just want some clickbait. You want, you want to start <laughs> some shit. I ain't gonna start next. I was just gonna ask the obvious <laughs> questions. Nah, you don't. This I'm, I know it's gonna be some clickbait. You gonna have it, and it's gonna be a caption like Southside Cheeky says that so 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 got evicted, and all that shit was outside. That's right. You ain't got the answer because I actually don't. You got the answer. Well, okay. Yeah, very unfortunate though, man. People take Instagram like it's real, like, like it's the Bible. Like shit ain't real. She was a facade, smoking mirrors. Like, people said, post what they want. Depending on if you know the person, that's when you can tell if it's real or not. Like, depending on how well you know the person. Like, because I mean, I know some folks that, like, in real life, they just be doing, like, the shit that they be posting on Instagram be the same shit they be doing every day. Like, they don't be, like, really trying to do too much or flex or, like, cap or, like, you know, be out arrogant and shit. And then I got, then I follow some people that just, I don't know, they be doing shit like posting old shit, like they out doing it now, <laughs> like just doing shit like popping shit on Instagram. But like, damn, I ain't never heard you pop shit like this in real life. <laughs> it be shit like that, so it be like, oh my god. Right, they be they be uh saving their vacation uh pictures to their phone and they post it later, act like they were there, yeah, in their location. All right, they be saving their old vacation pictures or whatever, then they post it later on Instagram months later and shit for everybody to see, shit like that. Say again, yeah. I'm uh -huh. saying like we already seen it when you first went on the trip, but you might post it and be like. It might not even be that. Like it might not. It might be you going out to eat or something like that. It might be a plate where you went out to eat. You might just post it and make it seem like you there. Months later, like you out eating it right now. Yeah, on the date, kind of nervous. They be using that cap. That's everybody's favorite caption. Females. I don't use that. I mean, I've used. What do that mean? Say nothing. Um. I really don't know where it came from. I really feel like it all started with one person posting it. Like, it probably was, like, a celebrity. 
they probably had just broke up with somebody and they probably just posted like a hand or something and was like, I'm on a date, kind of nervous on some shit where it probably was a meme or some shit. And then, you know, everybody just took it and ran with it. And not until I said, we don't even be on dates. When I post it, not until I said, I don't even be on a date. Like when, if I'm really posting on a date, kind of nervous, I'm not putting it really on a date. Like, I'm not putting it. <laughs> Unless it's like my boyfriend or something like that, then I'll just post it because it's like everybody know who I'm on a date with. But I might be out eating with my homegirl or something like that and just post our food and shit like that. Be like on a date, kind of nervous. And I might just play like that and be like, oh yeah, I'll let y'all mind wonder and think I'm on a date with somebody for real. But then they could just go to her page and see that we was just out eating together. <laughs> Do you feel like couples should put their relationship on social media or they should keep that private? Um, I feel like it needs to be public and private to a certain extent. Okay, okay, wait a minute now. Wait a minute. I need to hear this. I need to hear this. I feel like it needs to be public and private. I feel like you need to... You don't have to, but I feel like on certain occasions, like maybe like birthdays or something like that, like I feel like you should let the world know that you are messing with somebody and that you are like involved with somebody at a certain standpoint. I'm not saying like when you first start dating somebody that you got to post like, oh yeah, and y'all been dating for a week. You're like, yeah, it's my boyfriend. No. So like if y'all done been together for a year or something like that, y'all done decided y'all was low key for like a year, y'all decided, okay, we're going to pop out and stuff like that. I'm not saying y'all got to put you like, Post the person every day, but you know you can let it be known that you're dealing with someone or that you're involved with someone. But you don't have. To, I'm saying when I say that, it could be it could be public. I mean, it could be public in that sense. In private, at the same time, because like, don't be posting your business. Like, don't be posting the extra shit when y'all getting the argument. Don't be posting the little petty little subliminals because we all gonna know who you talking about. We all gonna see the little shit you talking about. Then we gonna go to their page and see what he talking about. Then we just gonna be going back to your page, back to your page, and see what the fuck y'all gonna be arguing about all day. And then next thing you know, at the end of the day, y'all gonna be laid up watching movies or some shit. Like sleep, no, sleep. like that. I feel like that's the part you need to keep private. The 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 little petty arguments, the little posts, and the little keep your personal life off of there. But as far as letting the world know that you're dealing with somebody, that you're fucking with somebody, I feel like that's necessary in a relationship because it's just going to be like, I don't know. I feel like eventually you're going to start to feel like they're hiding you in some type of way. I, I, don't, give a, I don't give a fuck how long like y'all wait to post each other. Because, you know, some people get in relationships like, we're just going to wait to, you know, pop out. So I respect that, but I'm saying, but, like, if you date somebody and then, like, you know, if you start to fall in love with this person, you know, you might post little stuff about them on your page and they just not posting nothing about you. Anytime you say something about it, they just always got a reason why they don't, you're going to start to feel like you're being hidden. So I feel like that's when it's going to become a problem. Like, you got to just let the world know that you're dealing with folks. Because I feel like when we out here single, we let the world know that we single, that we, we be posting little shit, oh, I'm single, oh, I'm trying to find somebody to do this, oh, where Bay at so I can go on vacation, I'm trying to be with Bay on vacation like this. Like, we be posting shit like that, letting the world promote in that. So why would we get with somebody we can't promote that? So you want your man to show you off like that Dose and Cabana shoes? No, they don't got to necessarily show me off. Like That's why I say I don't got to be posted, like, every day or something like that, but, like, just occasionally. Like if, we, if we just like if we going to do something like you don't even have to post it. You could just be recording. You could just be taking pictures just to have your memories and stuff like that. I know probably eventually one day down the line you're gonna post them. But it's just like if we going out to eat or we going to do something fun, or we going bowling, we going fucking to play laser tag, going hiking or some shit and you just like not trying to take no like try, not trying to take no pictures, not trying to have no memories, not trying to just do nothing. It's just going to be like, what the fuck are we dating for? Like, oh, my God. Like, yeah, we have it mentally, but shit, we could lose our memory. We need pictures. <laughs> like, so. I, ain't never posted, I ain't never did this shit post on social media. I keep it on my phone type shit. But I ain't never did this well, shit. Social media, it just be like, I just be wanting, it could be like, on my birthday, you could just be like, y'all. You just make a little post, have like a little small little paragraph, like this the girl that's been rocking with me, been fucking with me, have birthday, we gonna turn like da da da. That's it. So shit like that. I'm not saying like every day or waking day, as soon as I wake up, you just gotta be like, Good morning, sunshine. Good night. And then, like you don't gotta be from morning to evening, like no, you don't gotta be like that, but 
I I do want to be shown off because when I'm not an ugly female, I rap. But I got a lot of shit going for myself. So if it's random folks out here posting me as they woman curse Wednesday and they posting me saying how cute I look, but my nigga night, it's like something not adding up. Like Wait a minute. You just say women curse Wednesday. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Cause I know I don't have no problem. If I if I'm dating somebody and I fuck with you and I love you, or I like you, I'm gonna post you. And I'm gonna let the world know like, oh, this is my man Crush Monday. Or this is who I fuck with. I might post you out of nowhere, like just randomly post you with some hard eyes or some shit like that. Just because, or some shit like that. I, because it's just like the hell. I don't want. I'm not gonna want no. I'm not gonna not want to show him that type of affection and stuff like that in that type of way. And then somebody else come around and do it, and then catch his attention like that because they giving him that attention in that form. Like no. So I want to make yeah. sure I keep person attention in all aspects. Like. No, we're not finna slack in no way, shape, or form. We're finna just do everything right. So you like nice guys? I like guys. <laughs> I like guys. It all depends on what type of guy it is. I really like I <laughs> The point is that you like street niggas. I already know what it is. I already know what it's hit for. I've dated people that's not street. I've dated people that's not hood. I I bet it, it ain't last long though. No, it do. It usually be because they they usually either have something else going on. Like I they probably I feel like when I've dated somebody that's not like a hood nigga or something like that, just be like a regular guy, like an artist or something like that. I feel like when I be dating them, I be feeling like I'm the hoodest person they done been with on some shit, or like I feel like I'm the most like ghettoest person they done been with, like the blackest person they done been with in a sense. I just be like, I don't know. Like, when I might be having a certain conversation with them, I might say certain slang, they might not know what I'm talking about exact, exactly off the bat, because they not really they don't like green the, niggas. They not really in the... I don't like, I don't like green niggas. Like, you got to know something. Like, you got to have some type of knowledge. Like, you can't just be all the way green. <laughs> Every time I say something, you saying, what is that? What's that? What's that? Like, no, we, we can't date. Because I'm not the dictionary. I'm not the news. I can't be telling you what everything is. Like, no. You got to figure that shit out on your own. Like, you got to type it in on Urban Dictionary. I cannot tell you. Yeah, that's Urban Dictionary, bro. Fuck oh, love, bro. Man, so I just be like, I don't know if I do date somebody. I've dated normal guys, but I just feel like I was the hood one and they wasn't. But we always ended because they probably, I feel like they ended up going back and fucking with something that they was used to. Like, messing with, like, an ex or, like, messing with somebody else. Like, somebody more they speed. And then we you mean you were doing it? And no, and then we might break up, and then we might break up because I might be like, "Damn, I'm not finna go go with that." Because like I'm so used to dating hood niggas, that's all I really be around. I be around like hood niggas and artists and all type of different shit. So it just be like, that's all I'm really around. So like, if I end up getting out of a relationship with a hood nigga, like I said earlier, it might be that nigga that might slip through the cracks like throughout that time of me not talking to somebody, and I might start talking to them. And then they might start showing me some red flags throughout this day. Are they trying to fuck with somebody else? Are they fuck with somebody old or something like that? And I'm going to just cut it off right then. Like, nope, nope. And then it's all right. And then because you're already not something I'm used to. Like, you already like you already square. So it's like, I'm really like, I'm really settling for what I don't want. So it's whoa, like. Whoa, whoa. Maybe what in you a certain, was best for you. Well, maybe what you wanted certain, was best for you. Aspect, in a certain aspect. Like, because I know a lot of. Like, folks just think hood nigga mean, like, they ghetto, don't know shit. Like, I know a lot of smart hood niggas. So it's just, like, I know a lot of hood niggas. But what's your definition smart of a hood nigga? A nigga that's in the hood. <laughs> He's selling weed, scamming, trapping. He ain't got oh, no 9 to 5. That's a, tra that's a trapper. I mean, a hood nigga is just a nigga that be in the hood. Same a nigga thing. That has, I feel like a nigga that's been in the hood, a nigga that has had some type of hardships in life, has struggled. Mama will probably own Section 8. Dad probably used to sell dope back in the 80s. Shit like that. That's a hood nigga. So, so you want guys that kind of had the same background and lifestyle that you had growing up type shit? Yeah, because we don't relate. Um, I like that. I'm a love street I, nigga. I mean, I'm not saying that that's all I want to talk to because I done dealt with people with different backgrounds, but it just be like it never ended up working like we ended up clashing. 
in some type of sense, but we end up being cool. We end up having good relationships. We better off, I feel like we'd be better off as friends because it'd just be like, we'd be so different. It'd just be like, uh-uh. They might do something like, I don't know. Certain people more like aggressive. They like say how they feel, so like that. Certain niggas don't do that. Certain niggas just, I just can't explain it. I can't explain it. I know what you're like, okay, for instance, like, if me and you didn't come from the same background, and I'm talking my shit to you, and you try to pop your shit back to me, I'm going to bust the fuck out laughing because I know you're not living like that. I know you're not built like that for real. I know you ain't come from that background. So, because, I mean, like, if it, is a, if it is a square nigga that's like, he could be the right amount of aggression in certain areas, but it's just like, I don't know. I feel like when they start doing shit or saying shit, and I feel like, you don't really live like that. You don't really act like that. Or they might start you mean talking. You example. How, if they start talking how I'm talking and like they slang might switch up or they might, I don't know. It'll just turn me off like, who are you trying to be? Me? Wait, 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 wait. This is what I said. This is what I'm saying. Women don't know what they want. Though. Women don't know what they want in a relationship. Though. Women don't do know, know what they what want. I, how they treat me, how I treat them. That's why I said I don't have a type. Like, it all depends on your vibe, your energy and shit like that. You just ask me what I'm like attracted to, what I'm used to. And that was, and it's hood niggas. That's all I'm used to. But you know, the nigga got to sell like pounds, ain't he? he? Can't sell ounces. He got to sell pounds. No, he just he, got, he just have a he just got to have a hustle mentality. I don't give a fuck what he sell. He can sell t-shirts, and socks, for all. He but he's got to have a hustle. He's got to have a goal. Like you got to have some type of ambition. He can't just so in other words, you. Would- Huh? Mm. So in other words, you would talk to a young boy instead of Chance the Rapper. You had to choose. So you would date rather Chance the Rapper or a young boy. Which one would you choose? Chance the Rapper or a young boy? Um, my friend JK is gonna be so mad because the young boy is her man. But I don't know. I feel like first of all, Chance the Rapper ain't he like married with a family. I'm just saying hypothetical, man. I'm saying hypothetical. Don't drop the technical with it. Hypothetical. Okay. Hypothetically. Chance the Rapper is not really like my type. I really like dark skinned guys. Because he's really not like a duck, because he ain't a street nigga. That's what it is. No. No, Chance the Rapper is just not my type. If you if you put another sophisticated, like normal nigga that's dark skinned, I just Kendrick don't Lamar. Like, I just don't we, I don't think Kendrick is on that. Let's just say Kendrick and Young Boy. I'll fuck with Kendrick. It ain't gonna last long, though. I'll fuck with Kendrick because even though Ken, cause Kendrick is like one of them hood niggas that's smart as fuck, like I was talking about. So I feel like, I feel like as long as we vibe right and then I like keep shit 100 with him and he keeps shit 100 with me, we're gonna be cool. I feel like, young boy, he got a lot going on. He got like baby mama here, baby mama here. He is women like that. Women like baby, women like kids with baby mama. Women love it. Yeah, like, I'm saying, but if your baby mama still in love with you, still want to be with you, this ain't like you. These just some baby mama just like nigga, just do for your kids, and I ain't stun you. These is females that still want to be with him. He got yaya married, like no, <laughs> no. So if he cut sliding your DMs, you gonna decline? You know what you're saying? No, I'm gonna I'm a slide. <laughs> I'm gonna slide. I'm gonna slide for sure. So if he tell you to come over, you gonna come over? Yo. You be baby mama number eight? No. I'm going to use protection. <laughs> I don't know about them. Because it seemed like he just be, I don't even know where his baby mama's coming from. Because it don't be like he be dating them for a minute. And we, then, then the baby just pop out. It just be like, boop, boop, baby mama, baby mama. He's like, whoa. The only person that I've seen him with, the only two people I've seen him with that popped out with babies is y'all, y'all, and Janine. Well, you know, Connors ain't always 100% protected, though. So you can't even see. And he got herpes. So that's amazing to me right there. First if you got clout. Yeah. Huh? First, first, you know, do not have fucking herpes. I think he said, like, I think he said it. And, like, I think him and her said it, like, it was like a clout thing. Like, they just did it for publicity. Like, <laughs> that's all it was for. It's amazing to me with money. That's why he, he's never said, he's never said, like, I have herpes. He got that one song where he was like, when he was talking about him and Janelle, when he was like, 
they say that girl not on his side because he gave her her bees, but he was just saying it like from what they say, he say, she say type of perspective. So that's what used to get everybody out hype. But when he said that one, like everybody was just like, he admitted it. It's like, no, he did it. He said, they say <laughs> in front of it, front, before the bar. It's amazing to me what clout and money can do for somebody's career. You know, women I just mean, flock to it. Flock, clout I, and money. I, when you have stuff like that, you got to do it. It's like publicity. Like there's, I feel like there's no such thing as bad publicity. Unless you just out here getting exposed or some shit like that. That's probably like the only thing. But even then, that come with like a good side because in the midst of you get exposed, you get like a whole bunch of clout out of that. Like everybody want to know who the fuck you is and shit like that. But then the downside is it's a whole bunch of like weirdos and DMs trying to do stuff with you. Thanks. And uh, using a female cipher with London B. Yeah. How how y'all linked up on that on progress report? Um, it was really around the time like after I dropped my first EP, and then it was just like I really I really don't remember either. I'm just gonna shout out everybody because it's Boss Threat and DJ XL and um. Eco, I think that's her name. They all hit me up. Well, one of them hit me up and asked me if I want to be a part of this cipher. And I asked them, like, I pretty much told them, like, I've never been a part of a cipher before. So I had to ask them, like, what was all, like, the everything that had to be done and shit. So then they pretty much just gave us, sent us, like, three beats in our email and was like, you can pick from either B, you have to write to a minute. And that was pretty much it. And we had like, like I think either a day or two days. So technically like, it wasn't a real freestyle. It was kind of like you wrote it and you memorized it. All ciphers are like pre-written. Like none of them are like freestyles. I mean, I'm pretty sure there's certain people that grew up being actually freestyle, but them be the folks that get talked about because it just be like, nigga, we don't want to hear the person that came up in mind. We want to hear you ride this beat, say some fast shit. So it just be like, like that XL when that uh, the baby and Meg Satan was on. That was a whole song that he had did that he had did for the freestyle. That right. was a song recorded, but it went hard on the cipher. But they not saying do no shit like that, like come and do some old shit, but. They want you to write to the beat right then. So it's just like, it really, it kind of make you push your pen because you have to kind of like, depending on what type of artist you is. Like me, I'm not, my strong suit is not really freestyling, but my pen game is like crazy. So it's just like, when they did it like that, I was like, yeah. Cause then, but it made me push, it made me push myself. Cause it's just like, after I write this shit, it all, cause it's just like, damn, I gotta, cause the shit is like two days away. So it's like, I can't spend, too, I can't spend like I can't write how I normally write a song and just be like might just stop and then come back to it hours later or a day later like no I gotta write this shit today then I gotta memorize this shit because it's gonna be in front of a uh, TV it's gonna be in front of other folks so it's, I gotta memorize this shit and like get ready to like really perform this shit in front of these folks and like within two days so it's just like it's almost like you're getting ready for a concert slick in two days. Like somebody hit you up, like, "Hey, you trying to come to Rolling Out? You trying to come to Rolling Loud or some shit like that?" And then they tell you two days before the shit, like, "Yeah, make sure you have your dancers and everything ready." Like, oh shit, you was like, "Okay." Because you're you kind of stressed about doing it. No, nah, I was like so excited. I was really nervous. I had talked to London when I first got there because we—that was like before. I don't really know if that was before or after she was on the show, but it was like I had met her before the show had aired, so I feel like it was probably I feel like it was probably before the show. But me and her was talking, we was there, and we was just like, because we was like listening to the beat and stuff. Like me and my friends, we was just sitting back there, and we was like smoking and vibing and shit. And she came and she was like vibing with us and stuff like that. So she was like real down to earth. She's real good. She got real good energy, real good vibe, and she dope as hell. Like. I'm not gonna cap, even though it was my first cipher, everybody was like, Oh, you killed it and shit like that. You rolled the beat and stuff like that. I was so nervous. But she like really like came and like really set the tone of the cipher, like showed us how to like 
like how you post the sound on the mic, how you post the deliver, like she came with it. Only like after that, I was like, oh my God, we got to do a song together. She was like, yeah, we got to do a song together. And then the show came out and now she booked and busy. But hopefully if I reach out to her folks, we still do that song. But now she booked and busy, so I ain't really hit her up after the show and really asked her about it. Because I don't want her to think I'm trying to, like, clout chase because she did. I ain't want her to think I was trying to clout chase because she had just did the show. Like, yeah, so you, we still going to do that song, right? Like, I ain't want her to be like, oh, no, bitch. She can so y'all still song. got a relationship? Um, we follow each other on Instagram. But, like I said, she got kind of, like, busy after the show. I really don't. When folks get busy, I don't really take it personally because I know, like, how it is when I get busy. So. got like real busy for her and then like she started moving no but i just felt like yeah i just feel like after the show shit probably just got real busy for her so i ain't want to intrude if that makes sense because it's just like no nah. <laughs> we're gonna do the song we're gonna do the song <laughs> So who do you feel like had the best cypher besides you? I feel like she did. It was another artist on there called Fleeke. She's dope. Um, my girl Heaven, Venice from uh, Zone City, Eastside, yeah. She, she finds him. She got y'all go. Yeah, I need to follow her. Heaven, Venice, she real dope. You should, get, you should interview with her. Tell her to come on the platform. She got a song called um, Atlanta, and this shit fires for Tell her come on the platform. We accepting everybody over here. So, uh, I don't know if I asked you this already. I feel like I did, but uh, what's your definition of an F boy? A fuck boy? Yeah. Boy, I feel like it's someone who dates a female or tries to get with the female with no intentions of really being with that female. Mm. Like the ones that get with females be like, like we all dating, they like, well, I want to marry you, I want to have kids with you, da 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 da. Like I'm saying, like, probably like after some months, y'all date, depending on how long y'all been dating, like, yeah, they might be oh. like, see me marrying you, I can see us having kids. And, this and that. So, like, niggas will say that, and then they might switch up and then just want to start being hoes. So then it'd be like, you're not acting like what you said. Like, have you had a guy tell you that shit before? Every person I've ever been with has told me that before. They want to marry you. They would marry me. They can see oh, themselves. hell no. They can see themselves marry me and having kids with me. Hell no. I don't even, they ain't, no, they don't even come to my mind when I meet a woman. What the fuck? Maybe not when you, I'm not talking about like when they first meet me, they just like, oh yeah, I can see myself. No, it'd be like if we're dating, like during time. Like, when I'm dating. Uh -uh. No. It might be around the time, like after we first said, I love you or something like that. Like when we in love, they might just be like, yeah, I can see myself. Um, only woman I'm in love with is my mama, man. Fuck that shit. How long y'all be dating till they say that shit? Who broke your heart? Who broke your heart? Ain't nobody broke my heart. I'm just keeping that shit real. What is going on with y'all, boys? Stop simping. Please, these women will fuck anybody with clout and money. Get your money up, guys. Stop that is not the true. bullshit. Shit. That's not true. Shit. That's not true. That, little, that little girl that, that, that's messing with Kodak, that shit don't count. That's that, not true. Because it's some niggas that got money that didn't try to talk to me, and I won't talk to them because they might just got a bad energy. They might got... Uh, they might be disrespectful as fuck. They might just not be good as a person. So it might be like, yeah. That just sound got, good. Just because they got money, that don't mean shit. That sound good. But money talks bullshit, walks a thousand miles. So I got a camera that still hit me up from fake pages, and stuff or something. Like, he would cuss me out, like, on some random shit. Like, if I won't, he'll hit me up. If I just read the message, don't say nothing back. Because I'll be like, who the fuck is this? And I won't say nothing back. He'll, like, send a voice message, like, bro, stop playing with me. Da -da -da -da. And I'm like, what the fuck? Who is this? Like, no. Like, it'd be shit like that. Just because we probably went on a date or fucked around. 
for some shit, and then they probably showed me like a disrespectful ass side, and I was just like, no, I don't give a fuck what you got, what you bring to the table, what you doing. You're not from disrespect me, like no, can't do it. Mm. Can you give me, can you give me like two more signs of F boy? Give me one. Give me like two more. Two. I don't really know. Mm. Hell, you just gotta. They everywhere. <laughs> Mm. And then uh, I, I watched one of your interviews with Progress Report. You said you still work a nine to five and you work at the smoke shop. Is that still true? Yeah, at that time I was working at a smoke shop. I don't work there anymore. But I still don't mind having a nine to five. Like I still don't. I don't see nothing wrong with having a nine to five to try to you know chase your dreams. Working a nine to five is like niggas look down on you working nine to five nowadays. Like. Not five, ew. They can look down all they want. But I'm going to be looking down at my paycheck. <laughs> yeah, I know that's right. I know that's right. I know that's right. I mean, that fits you well, though. I mean, you look like you're a heavy smoker. What, rapping? Yeah, like you like a heavy smoker. Like you just smoke Why, a lot of You said what fits me well. I said fits you well working at a smoke shop. Cause you a heavy smoker. Okay. Yeah. Your service yeah. trash. That's lit. That's lit. You said what? Your service was trash just then. Whoa, whoa, whoa! My service is good. All my other shit, they work fine, bro. Your service, <laughs> babe. You need to fix your service. Like you're fixing that blunt, you need to fix your service. Yes, yes. Bit, bit, bit. Um, have you ever thought about giving up on music? I think every artist probably like You said every artist? I want to say every artist probably like 20% of the time, probably even more, probably like 40% of the time you be thinking about giving up. It's, it all depends on how you, on how music is going for you. Like when music be going slow for me, I just be like, yeah, this shit not the move. Like some got to shake, some got to give, like. Mm -mm. Everybody think that music shit is just so easy and it's just so easy to do and that it's so easy to make money. Like, I probably done done like six paid features. But other than that, it's just be like, ain't no real money in music. You really gotta like work your ass off for that shit. It's fake. It's fake. How many times you uh, thought about giving up? It came across your mind and shit like that. I really. Yeah, I need to find another profession, another field of work. I don't really know how many times exactly. Well, it was probably more than four. Six, six. Then I oh, listened to a song. I forgot the name of the song. I think it was a uh, Jackie Chan. And you said behind a pretty smile, you got a mind full of demons. What kind of demons you fighting at night? That's mud. Mud, yeah, mud. Yeah, right. Damn it. But, um, I, um, it's just demons from shit I've been through in life. Like, um, my auntie passing. Like, right after I dropped my EP, she kind of passed shortly after that. So, just be dealing with a whole bunch of different stuff. Shit I done been through, shit I done seen. Yeah, yeah. I think everybody fighting demons every day, ain't it? Yeah. We don't think keeping you up at night. Mm. Yeah. You gotta protect that energy, though. I feel like that's um, serious. Protect the energy. You believe in burning sages? Um, I believe it 
cleanse these like houses and stuff. But I really, mm, I really don't even know what it does for real. I feel like it gets real bad energy. But I believe praying does the same thing. Facts. It's essential. It's essential. Yeah. Yeah, man. Prayer work. But listen, though, man, I appreciate having you on the platform. Yes, it was fun. I like this interview. Even though you asked a lot of personal shit, it was a good interview. I appreciate it. I mean, it's usually me, though. It's the best one you ever had so far, but we're going to go with that. <laughs> best one. Best one you had so far. Best one you had so far. You can't say that. Why well, can't? You're in competition with somebody else. You're in competition with the progress support. One of the best interviews you had. You got to get, one you gotta get a studio space. And do it the right way, not this quarantine shit. <laughs> You're right. So that means you can come fly out and come see me. Then you can come fly and see me in person. I live there. <laughs> I'm just visiting California for music purposes. Uh, uh, you might find you a uh, might find you a rap out there. You might not have to rap no more. You might find you rap out there. First of all, just because I find somebody to do something I want to do, they'll be my dream going to just stop. Like, I'm just going to meet a rapper and just be like, oh, I'm sad. I don't want to rap no more. You got it. You the rapper for both of us. Like, no. I mean, if you, get, if you find a Drake out there, young boy, whatever the case may be, shit. But tell Drake, yeah. like, look, I got bars for real, so ain't nobody feeling no we date for a little minute. You finna sign me to your label and shit like that. I'm finna work and, and I'm finna... Actually make it and do the work and make it and shit like that. Because I don't want us to date. And folks know we date. And then you find out I'm fine. And then you, you help me. And then everybody say, oh, I'm only famous because I'm dating you. Or something like that. Or I don't want to fucking date you and shit like that. And then after, if we break up and shit like that, now everybody going to think everything I'm rapping about after that is going to be about him. They're going to think everything I'm doing is trash because I'm old news and I'm so and so ex. I don't want to be what you call an ex. I mean, if you get pregnant, I mean, if you get pregnant by Drake, man, you set for life, though. God damn. You set for life, man. Oh, my God. I'm trying to set myself up for life. I don't want nobody to set me up for life because if they, somebody else can set you up for life, they can take you down off that life as well. Like, I don't want nobody to set me up. For life, if they set me up like as far as like put shit in my name, <laughs> shit like that, yeah, then you can set me up like that. Buy me stock, help me, invest in me or some shit like that. Yeah, that'll help me. But, uh -uh. hey, listen, man, I appreciate you being on. It's a pleasure to have you. Got any shots, anything? Um, I want to shout out to my mother, my father. And all my friends, J Cash, Jamia, fucking K, Lenny, Key, all y'all. I just want to shout y'all out. Ooh, Gotti, I miss them in here. I just want to shout out all my friends because y'all the reason that like keep me going. My family, God. I don't know if I said God, but I'm saying again. <laughs> That's pretty much all I want to shout out. Shout hey, man. Out <laughs> shout out to me too. Shout out to you for this interview. Shout out to Atlanta because that's my hometown. Shout out to the South Side. All that shit. Shout out to hey, you. man. We lit, man. We out. Hey, man. Keep doing your thing. You know, I appreciate you, man. Keep grinding. Nothing but the best success for you. Thank you for having me. We out, y'all. All right.